Dr. Russell Blaylock. Uh, I'm a board certified neurosurgeon. I've retired from active practice. Now I do primarily uh, theoretical research in neurosciences uh, and uh, spend most of my time writing uh, research articles, review articles on neuroscience projects uh, at the present time. Well, leading from that, when we start looking at, well, look at some of the programs that have sort of spurred out of this. Uh, you know, the high-tech DNA uh, manipulation, brain manipulation through electrodes or, or through uh, uh, transmission uh, uh, outside of electrodes to change human thinking. These are the more sophisticated uh, programs that are uh, a little bit more obvious, but then there's things that are less obvious. For instance, fluoridating water. They looked at 39,000 school children in which they looked at the effect of fluoridation versus non-fluoridation, and they found it had no beneficial effect at all. Well, they hid that document uh, so scientists couldn't examine it, and the public and the media uh, would never see it. Uh, well, a Dr. Yamanyanis, uh, who is a chemist, uh, filed a Freedom of Information uh, lawsuit, had it released, and then he saw why they wanted to hide it, and that's because uh, it clearly demonstrated fluoride uh, did not reduce cavities. Another study included 400,000 children in India. Uh, all of these studies showed the same thing. Adding fluoride to water did not reduce cavities at all. And in fact, several of the studies that showed it increased cavities. And it did so because it weakened uh, uh, the dental layer of the tooth and made it more prone to, uh, to become cavitous. Uh, so now that we've established, and it's admitted by the National Science Foundation study, which was recently completed, that fluoridating water does not reduce cavities. Uh, there's no modern evidence whatsoever that fluoridating water reduces cavities at all. So you have to ask the question, well, why are you still fluoridating water? And even insisting that bottled water be fluoridated, that no one would have access to unfluoridated water uh, except the elite. Well, if we look at uh, the scientific studies on what is the effect of fluoridation, well, we know fluoridating water uh, through a number of studies, some of which were ordered by the federal government itself in the earlier days, increases cancer risk. Uh, this study was so impressive to some members of Congress, they ordered a study of this link to cancer through the Battelle Research Institute. These studies showed that, number one, it produced a number of types of cancer, uh, one which was a very rare liver cancer, and uh, it significantly increased the growth of cancer in people who already had cancers. Uh, we know that it has profound effects on the brain. Uh, one of the most uh, impressive was done by Dr. Uh, Phyllis Mullenix, who was a highly regarded neurotoxicologist. The fluoride produced two main effects. If you fed the fluoride to a pregnant animal, the offspring then became hyperactive. If you gave the fluoride uh, after birth, the animal became very lethargic, sort of like a couch potato, didn't really want to do anything, became very apathetic acting. She completed this research, and she also measured the fluoride levels in the animal's brain and found some very interesting things. It's that fluoride tends to accumulate in the part of the brain that controls behavior, particularly the, the uh, hippocampus and the other limbic areas of the brain. Well, she, uh, after they found that this had been published, uh, they fired her. And the Forsyth Dental uh, Research Institute, in fact, about that time, had gotten a quarter million dollar grant from the Colgate Company, which fluoridates their toothpaste. Well, Dr. Yamanyanis did some studies and looked at the different tissues in the body, found out the highest accumulation was in the thyroid gland. It had been known that one way to reduce thyroid function was to put fluoride in the water, that it produced a significant hypothyroidism or low function of the thyroid gland. Now, not only does that uh, produce lethargy, apathy, uh, weakness, tiredness in adults, but if you do it in pregnant women, the babies are born with low IQs and they never recover. So we've got some rather profound problems with fluoridation 
that are now well documented uh, uh, from laboratories all over the world uh, without any question. For instance, one of them Dr. Varner did uh, out of Europe in which he looked at 0.5 parts per million, which is half of what's put in water, and found significant death of neurons in the brain and damage to the blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. Uh, he's a highly regarded researcher. He was published uh, in a very prestigious uh, neurological journal. Fluoride reduces reproduction. It influences sperm mobility, sperm production, and uh, testosterone level in males. And it bioaccumulates in these organs and gradually reduces uh, the ability uh, to, to reproduce. Why is the public being kept in the dark? I leave it uh, to the audience to think for themselves. What could possibly be the justification for doing such a thing? If you've demonstrated it doesn't reach its objective, that is reducing cavities, which everybody now has admitted, even the ADA has had to admit it, why is it still being added to the water? And so, you know, just answer that question yourself without saying, well, they're doing it on purpose. You have to say, well, either they're doing it on purpose or they're the most incredibly stupid and confident people in the world and they don't deserve to be in positions of power and should be removed from positions of power. And people with good cognitive sense replace them. There's the only two choices you have uh, in this debate. Either they're incredibly stupid and incompetent or criminal or they're doing it on purpose for a reason, which goes back to the Rockefeller design of human engineering.